so uh, my name is amisha i am currently doing my law at law center one presently i am in first year hopefully i will promote to second year as well so the first task that i was assigned was to uh, was to focus upon sort of legal provisions of ss attacks in india and the landmark judgment and the guidelines associated with it so here goes the ppt associated with the same so the first slide that focuses on what is an asset attack am i audible now am i audible to everybody okay. yes you are okay so okay the first slide talks about what is an asset attack so attack is something that we do to cause harm to somebody Okay, so asset attack is something that we do by destroying or administrating asset on somebody. It may be done by destroying it directly from a bottle, container. It may be a syringe. It may be a jar. It does not matter. What is the reason behind these attacks? Many times, it is a rejection of love, marriage. When you reject sexual advances of a man, it may be a reason of jealousy. It may be dowry. It may be any sort of reason. Revenge. If we Come down to jot down the basic points of the same. The so next slide talks about what an asset actually is and what happens when it is thrown at the bottle. So we have all read sciences in our uh, basic basic studies. We know what asset is, and we all know that if not diluted, asset can actually pose a threat to an entire body. So suppose if it, if we happen to sprinkle a drop of asset on our on our finger while we're working in the laboratory, it actually harms us. We have all experienced it at some point of time. So suppose somebody happens to throw an entire bottle of acid on somebody, we cannot actually imagine, we cannot judge what pain that particular person might go through. Some of the basic acid that are used by throwing these acids upon somebody are sulfuric acid, nitric acid, hydrochloric acid. Of course, nobody tries to think that it will be diluted or concentrated. All they are concerned with is to take it a bench. So what happens after that is the you know then destroy their skin tissues many times there is there is renal failure there is excessive burns many times people die out of it uh, and also this, uh, the anxiety and the depression that is followed with this is something that is unmatched moving on the question the basic question is whether the is the attack is gender biased do we say that it is only associated with women no particularly not because there have been men there have been several cases where even men have been attacked for well data for any sort of revenge and there is no dearth of cases where the men are also attacked but when we come down to compare the cases that were compared to that of men and women we have to focus upon the fact that there have been almost negligent negligent cases when compared to that of women women uh, most of the women those who have been attacked they were the ones who, who who tried to break the norm of the society who tried to say no to a man who Try to hurt someone's egoistic personality, who did not feed to the egoistic personality of a man. Somebody, somebody who tried to step out of their homes, tried to study further. So these are the some of the cases that some surviving women are being women are being attacked. This is only to satisfy a man's egoistic pleasure. If you fail to do that, you are attacked. So I would, my, I would personally, I personally think in fact that yeah, I said that we that more or less. Related to women itself. Moving forward, uh, as far as the Indian police sections are concerned, uh, there are they had no there were no provisions as such. So whenever there used to be a said attack, uh, they were the guilty, but it actually it's prohibited under Section 326, which is punishment for causing grievous hurt by dangerous weapon or means. So here the dangerous weapon is the acid itself, and um, the grievous hurt is the burns that are caused by these acids. And many a times they are also punished under punishment for attempted murder. But then Burma committee was formulated beyond no 2013. Then after the Nirbhaya case, uh, they have been a revolution in change. People were more focused towards, more, more focused towards trying to uh, more, make more stringent laws against the crimes that were happening to them in India. And that also took, uh, come, took, took the notice of Burma committee. And the Burma committee tried to focus upon the uh, upon uh, the lack of stringent punishment in case of the acid attacks. So what they did is they recommended for a penal statute and this was followed in the Canadian Amendment Bill in 2014. Two sections were inserted, 326A and 326B. One of the essentials of 326A of course is the court, they must have caused permanent or partial damage 
it, can, it may have burned may disfigure the particular person the target upon him if yes, it was thrown the act caused grievous hurt to the victim it may have caused thrown or administered acid on the victim or with full knowledge and intention that yes by doing that he is going to do a harm to that particular person so there is full knowledge and intention full mens rea actus is on the law of course that there is so section 326 focuses upon this so what were the provisions into punishment 326a incorporated a 10 year imprisonment along with fine then there is 326b which also attempts to punish acid attacks of uh, attempts to punish all those who try to uh, uh, do acid attacks i mean attempt to acid attacks so there is five to seven year imprisonment provided for the same but in acid attack study if we are doing studying about acid attack we also have to focus upon that one particular person who has actually brought the division to change as far as the acid attack and the previous statutes for the same are concerned Lakshmi, we all know, thanks to the much acclaimed uh, movie Chapak that was enacted by the Pitapadikon. But we also owe to most of the efforts that she had put in by framing a PIA, um, trying to seek a control on the sale of the assets, trying to enact the law, providing a sufficient compensation to the victim. And we all know Chapak. Chapak, we have seen, so she had rejected the sexual advances of a man who was 17 years older than her, and she had to bear the brunt of it. Uh, but instead of trying to uh, stay at home and trying to just for limit the fight for her own self, what she did instead is to focus upon the sufferings of the entire women who are being suffered because of these acid attacks. So she uh, filed the PIA. The, after the PIA, the Supreme the guidelines. The guidelines followed that the acid should not be sold to anyone who is below 18 years of age. A photo identity is a must if you want to buy it. It must you should pencil the purpose in case seller one in case the seller who is actually selling the asset, he must also produce the documents to the nearest police station. He must give information about the stocks and in case he ha happens to have some undeclared stocks, these are liable to be confiscated. Those who uh, such as liberators sometimes may require to keep these assets in the plenty of one home, so they have to keep reasonable precautions keep possession and safekeeping of the assets. Regarding the compensation to the victim, in Lakshmi versus Union of India, Supreme Court held, then they must be provided sufficient compensation and it is the state duty to formulate a proper victim compensation scheme. So, so they provided for sufficient compensation for the rehabilitation and proper treatment. Now, the greatest landmark judgment that has been in case of acid attack is that of Parivartan Kendra versus Union of India. In this case, two Dalit girls were attacked. Uh, so the main victim was, of course, the one who, who was the main target. Her sister was sleeping beside her, so she also became one of the victims. The Supreme Court are taking cognizance of the fact that there have been very poor treatment and very poor implementation of all the guidelines that were formulated. Uh, Supreme Court, uh, um, Supreme Court uh, asked the state to mention their names under the Disability Act and also awarded a whooping amount of 13 lakhs, to, 10 lakhs to the main victim and 3 lakhs to the to the to her sister who happened to live beside her. She was not the main target, but of course she was also affected. So this is quite a big and landmark case because of course uh, the Supreme Court awarded a whooping amount of compensation. 30 lakhs is not a small amount. So this is something which, uh, that we really must focus upon because the people who actually uh, not only was acquired by the increasing rate of acid attack in India, but also provided for huge compensation. So at the end, what do we conclude? Do we say that acid attack is actually in stock? Absolutely not. It is a revenge, it is a bit of a cat policy. People will, men, men try to attack on the most beautiful trait of a woman, her beauty. That's something that the society values the most. And so, so that she would be deemed to live in a secluded life, her lifetime. Uh, but we all know that there is no dearth of female statutes, there is no dearth of guidelines as such, which actually restrict acid attacks in India. What needs to be done instead is that instead of trying to salvage the situation once the crime is committed, we should try to prevent the crime at the very first phase. That is, it should not happen. And trying to compensate for it after it has happened is something that uh, that does not come into concern. We should try to uh, 
uh, restrict it before it happens. So what, how can we do that? We can do that by trying to restrict the smell of the acid. Uh, it is not preventive, of course, because acid may be used in, in, in different purposes. But there must be a restriction upon the sale and the buying of the acid. So that's pretty much the presentation. So I will conclude with this statement. Thank you.